this is a funnel. I, I still need this. What's up, SC Nation? Ramsey here. In case you're wondering, I love to talk about sales engineering, aka pre sales, aka solutions engineering, aka solutions consulting. A you get the point. So I love talking about it. I love helping people get jobs as sales engineers, whether they're looking for, they're already sales engineers looking for a new, new job or they're looking to transition from something else into sales engineering. You might have heard me talk quite a bit about how getting a job is kind of like a sales opportunity where you have to go out, find a job, right? You have to go close a deal, get an offer and all that. So I'm going to dig into this a little bit deeper. And you might have heard the term work your funnel. If you're ever in sales, if you've worked in anything related to sales, you might have heard the term work your funnel. So let's start off with what is a funnel? Well, this is a funnel. But before we build a funnel, let's talk about what a funnel is made of, what it is composed of, and actually discuss how to build it in a second. So the first layer of a funnel is the leads. And it's the widest part of the funnel. You have the most amount of leads, or usually you have more leads than you have offers. So the biggest part is the leads. The second part of the funnel is the qualified leads. The third and fourth parts of the funnel are for those leads are qualified a little bit more. You're, you've done discovery and you're in the selling motion. So there, you found that there is, there is a technical fit and you're in the selling motion. The fifth layer is the negotiation and proposal. And then what comes out of the funnel are the closed leads that have been won. Right, closed opportunities that have been won. You can close opportunities as lost throughout, which is why the funnel gets smaller. You have the biggest amount of leads, and then you say, you're out, you're out, you're qualified out, we just lost this deal to somebody else, all the way down to proposal, and then whatever comes out are closed one opportunities. So, and you might have many of those, which is different from getting a job, you only need one offer, and that's it, and you qualify the rest out. So from a job hunting perspective, it is very similar. You're not trying to sell your product, you are the product, and you're just trying to close one deal. And the way we usually build the funnel is top down. It's, it's unlike, it's the opposite of building a house where you start with the foundation and then you go up a funnel, as you saw, it's widest up on the, on the top, and you build down. We're talking specifically about finding a job, not finding an opportunity to sell your company's product. No, you are the product, you're trying to find a job. How do you build a funnel? Well, you build your network. You build, like, if you want to find more leads, you have to build your network. Basically, anyone in your network is a lead. And what that means, if you want more leads, if you want a wider funnel, the wider the funnel, the more opportunities to close deals. So you want a wide funnel. The way to do it is to build your network. And we've talked about this multiple times. How do you build your network? Well, you can check out my podcast with Anthony Palmozzi. We did discuss that. You start by simply liking, going on LinkedIn and liking people's posts, liking, uh, sharing their posts and working your way into building relationship with those people, even before you actually reach out to them. Basically, because they're seeing you liking their posts and sharing their posts, commenting on their posts, you're you're already building a relationship with them. So start there. Find the people that are influential in the industry that you're in. Find the people that are influential in sales engineering. Or this is applicable for whatever industry you wanna get into. If you don't wanna get into sales engineering, if you wanna get into something else, you can still use the same principles. It's just sales engineers recently have been way more active online, so it makes it easier. And you don't have to go on LinkedIn only. I know Anthony talked about going on uh, Twitter you can go on Instagram, wherever you find SEs, go there. Um, SENY has meetups, pre-sales collectives has meetups. Go to these meetups. Pre-sales talks, that's on Twitter. If you're interested in listening to like, clubhouse type thing on Twitter, Greg Holmes, Samuel West, they have pre-sales talks. So you can go check that out and attend and talk to people there as well. There are many ways for, for you to build your network. And the more you build your network, the more leads you get. Now, building the network is not the same as getting leads. Lead is basically a job opportunity. So if you find a posting, 
Uh, or you have a friend who tells you, oh, we're hiring, or I know that company's hiring, that's a lead. That goes into the funnel. The bigger your network, the more leads you get. Now, the network is not the lead. The lead is a job posting. Let's say you go on LinkedIn and you find a job posting. That's a lead. The bigger the network, the quantity of leads increases. Not the quality. Now, you need referrals. You need to talk to people. You need them to, to refer you to those roles, the better the quality of the leads. Not all leads are created equal. Some people, you find a job posting online and you apply and you never hear back. Is that a good lead? No. So you need to find good quality leads, leads where people can actually refer you. And that's how you build a big lead funnel. So we started off by, by liking people's posts. You, you can then connect with people, build those relationships with people so that they can refer you and you can get good quality leads. You need to fix up your resume so when they ask you to apply, you can apply and not be embarrassed by your resume or if they look at your resume not qualify you out even though you were a referral. And you can fix your LinkedIn so you can get people who are searching for potential SEs to find you and actually build a relationship with you the other way. So there's kind of like inbound and outbound. I discussed that with on my podcast last, this week. Um, so check that out as well. But now you need to go into step two, which is qualifying the funnel. You have all these leads. Some of them will turn into interviews. Some of them will not. If they don't turn into interviews, you just you, your funnel just shrank, got got smaller. And then if you do get interviews, you're most likely going to talk to the to the recruiter initially, and you're still qualifying the leads there. It's, they're not automatic opportunities, it's still a lead. You just talk to the recruiter. You want to make sure that the salary range is in the right range. And, you know, people say, like, don't answer the question about salary range. I never do. It's I tell them it's too early to tell. I need to talk to more people. But I always turn it back. It's like, hey, what is the salary range that you usually look, uh, offer as he's in this position? And they can tell you. And I've talked to several companies where they tell me it's like 50% less of what I'm making today. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm way off. It's fine. I can move on. Now, if you're in a world where you're still practicing to interview, you can keep going with it and practice the interview. You never know what could happen. But for someone in my position, someone who's experienced, someone who has a lot of leads coming in, you might want to not go on to those interviews and do the qualified if you if you don't have as much time the next step is to discover and to start selling yourself now you start selling yourself in theory when you're talking to the recruiter although if the recruiter doesn't like you they might not push you through if they do like you they will if they don't care you might not pass it'll be up to their discretion so you want to get past the recruiter so be nice to the recruiter be nice to everybody you meet. You never know who you meet. Anyways, just be a good human being. But once you've done that, you're going to talk to the hiring manager. And that's when you're going to start asking questions, try to understand if you're a fit for that role and also answering questions because it's an interview. It's a two-way street. Figure out if you're going to enjoy the role. Figure out if you're going to enjoy the teammates. And now you're in the selling and discovery motion. Try to understand what they're looking for. Why are they looking for someone now? What happened to the last SE in the territory? Uh, why did they leave? Are, is there a lot of turnover? How often are they hitting their quota? How many uh, SEs does that SE manager uh, manage? Who does he report into or she? So figure that out. Try to understand more. And the more you talk to SEs in that process, the more you can discover and the more you're selling yourself as well because you're asking them, hey, what kind of SE are you looking for? And then if it's... If you're that kind of SE, you can tell them, well, I'm that kind of SE. I do this. I've, I've solved these problems. I've worked on that. So, But if you can't discover those uh, requirements, you can never answer the questions accordingly. And now, as you can see, you start off with a lot of leads. You went into the recruiter or, or hiring manager, and you're, the leads are getting smaller, or the opportunities are getting smaller. You're, you're saying no to this. They're saying no to you on that. So it's just getting smaller and smaller which is why you need a big funnel at the top so that you have more opportunities. And now you're getting into the, you've, you've done the selling, you've done, you're doing the demo uh, interview, which is 
by the way, very different from doing a demo like for a customer. So now you're moving into the negotiation phase, right? They're going to offer you a proposal. You're going to say yes. You're going to say no. You're going to uh, negotiate on price. You're going to negotiate on vacation days, on RSUs. There are multiple things to negotiate on. But now you're getting to the bottom of the funnel. And as I mentioned earlier, when you're in sales, as, as a sales engineer or a salesperson, you have a quota and you need multiple opportunities, multiple deals to close to hit that quota. If you're an SE looking for another SE job, or not even SE, if you're just looking for an SE job, all you need to do is close one that you like. If you have multiple offers, you can then choose, which is great. But all you need is one. So that's the end of the fall. The thing is, leads can be in different stages of the funnel. Like you can have a brand new lead while you're do inter doing the demo interview for another lead down down on the bottom. So it's not simultaneous. It's you know, it's it's over a period of time. It can, you could be at any stage. You can be at different stages with different opportunities. So now you've gotten the offer. You've signed on the dotted line. You're you're officially uh, SE for that new company within like six six weeks or two weeks or whatever it is that you negotiate is your job done in building the funnel i would say it's never done the reason is you've spent a lot of time developing these great relationships with these different people you, the people you've interviewed uh, you've interviewed for you've interviewed with the people you've built relationships in order to get the opportunities to interview with others you never know what when you might need them again and you never know when they might need you. So if you want, I would say a lot of these things that came out just go right back into the top of the, the funnel. Even if you qualified them out earlier on in the, in the interview process, you never know. Next year, they could be in a different company and they could be hiring people there or they could be out of a job and they're looking for a job. So they go back into the top of the funnel and you can cherish those relationships you can you've built them you've worked hard on them don't just throw them out again they might need you you might need them keep meeting new people as well you just let's say you went up from 500 to 1000 connections on linkedin you go up to 2000 don't stop just because you got a job keep building be influential in the industry help other people in your position or trying to get to your position help people be part of their funnel as well why not? You can do that. Sales engineering, sales engineers, I've said that multiple times, sales engineering is the best community in the world. You should be part of it. You should be active in it. And hopefully you can help other people as much as you get helped by other people. And I will leave it there. So let me know what you think. If you did like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't, tell me why. I'd love to know why. So get back to work. Peace.